irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is The Rob Black Show. 1.9%. What is 1.9%? 1.9% is how much pet sales are down. (laughs) We know that Zoom thrived during the pandemic. We know that during the pandemic, we stayed at home for 2020. Kids weren't allowed to play with each other. It sucked. Soccer teams broke up. Never got back together the way they should have for my kids. Get it. What a lot of parents did to make their children happy was buy them a puppy. But pet supply sales are down now. Um, maybe the the pop or the, the height of the pandemic was for puppies too. It's a potential pet recession, if you will, when you see things fall. Pet grooming down 12.19.2%. Doggy bed sales are down 12.7%. Where will Fido sleep? Pet accessories took a 12.1% dive. It's not just um, you and me that see an inflation or deflation or recessions. It's a lot of things in our lives, including our animals. 5.11%. 5.11%. What is that? That's the average 30 year fixed rate, way up from where it was one year ago today at 2.97 on a mortgage. That's a big number. That's I think that's the story of the year. The cost of owning a home went up a lot. So let's say I'm 20 years old. I wish. What a fantasy, right? To go back in time, a share would say, if I could turn back time. She had a little Elvis thing going on, didn't she? Um, for me to get a 2.97% mortgage and you to get a 5.11, so two 20-year-old kids like competing against each other, that would be a remarkable difference in their life. The amount of money one would save versus the other in interest payments. The lower cost of mortgage, the 2.97, the amount of flexibility he would have to potentially slip and make a mistake somewhere in his life, probably an extra 400 to $500 a month if it's the average size home in America. So it's the cost of the mortgage that people freak out more so than the cost of the home, but we do it all wrong in the United States. We worry about the cost of the home. Now, the good news is I think we're well... well funded with cheap mortgages in the last five years for our economy to survive. But any mortgage that comes out now, I I see it as more problematic than mortgages from last year. So what are some other numbers to worry about? Let's talk zoomy, zoomy, zoom, little sexy French, shall I? I'm French. Um, $98. That's how much a... Journals, Natalia, underwear, underwire bras going for $98. Price went up $30 in the last year. So for women to wear a brassiere, a supporting garment for their skin, it's jumped 30 bucks. That's almost 50. That's a good 40% plus. That's inflation. Are you following, picking up what I'm putting down? Two courtside tickets for the Nuggets Warriors game five. Keep in mind, not the finals. Not the finals, okay? This is not the Super Bowl. This is not the, what is the world championships? What is that the NBA, what they call it? Uh, This is not a world series. This is not the world championship. This is not the Stanley Cup final. This is not the Super Bowl. This is not the, I don't know, the French Gunnel Slam. How much do you think two tickets are for... Really good seats. Now, again, I, I that's really not fair that I'm using the best seats in the house. But two courtside seats for game five, $26,000. $26,000. $26,000. If you give that $26,000 to a 21-year-old and he goes to the, the game, I would slap you. I would pull a Will Smith on you. It would not be pretty. But with that said... If that 20 year old were to take that $26,000 and invest it, by the time they're 27, it would be 52,000. By the time they're 35, 
it would be a hundred thousand plus by the time they're 44 ish, 200,000 by the time they're 50 ish, you're talking 400,000 by the time they're 60, you're talking over a million dollars, but he could watch a three hour basketball game that in the big grand scheme of things, he could watch at home or any bar and have just as much fun. No, no, no. There's nothing like court sign. I get it. But dang, man, that's uh, that's that's killing me just to read it out loud. Twenty six thousand dollars, so a million dollars, or a three hour fancy. Having kids has become a privilege in today's society. This is a story I'm working on for television. It's almost like the haves and have nots. The stork's not as busy as he used to be. Elon Musk has talked about what's going to ruin the world is not having babies. U.S. birth rate has been falling since 2008, dipping even further when the pandemic hit. U.S. birth rate fell by 4% from 2019 to 2020, sharpest single-year decline in nearly 50 years, the lowest number of births since 1979. These are future taxpayers. They also are a nice way of sweetening the economy. So if you think something like 5% of you know, 20 to 35 year olds, fewer are having babies. They're probably still working. They're probably still putting a roof over their head. Maybe not working as much because a baby's expensive. A baby is $250,000 from age zero to 17. And another $250,000 in college costs and room and board from, uh, the, for the college years. So is all that money being spent? Some of it's being saved for sure. Some people will have better retirements because they don't have children. But a baby is a status symbol? Are you kidding me? Can you imagine walking around with an Apple iPhone, a Tesla, and a baby? Life's been good to that person. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube at Rob Black Show. The fortune-making spirit of today's marketplace, The Rob Black Show. Still processing the world's most elusive billionaire, Jeff Bezos, Mackenzie Scott. Who is it? Is it... Elon Musk. We're living in a billionaire's world at this point in time. Who would have thought that a billionaire would be able to be annoyed with a problem that he would throw billions of dollars at it? Two years ago, a couple economists published a statistic that you don't normally see. It was the share of wealth owned by the richest 0.00001% of Americans. It's 18 households, each had a net worth of about $66 billion in 2020. And we talk about how their, their, their wealth keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's expected now that other billionaires may step in and buy companies um, and kind of copy Elon Musk and his $44 billion bid for Tesla. Not Tesla, but Twitter, excuse me. Um, he's only using $21 billion of his own cash using, I don't, I'm not going to say aggressive financing, but again, it shows you that that's the power of the wealthy options when it comes to, um, how to play out finances. You can find me online at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about money, investing, and more, um, The oldest woman on the planet just died at 119 years old. I don't know how to feel. I think about that. I see video of her and it, I don't want to say it makes me, it's upsetting. I don't want to be that old. She was around when the Wright brothers had a sustained flight in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Um, excuse me? <laughs> like, okay. That's living a long time. NASDAQ was up 1.2% yesterday. The SP 500 up one half, 1%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up seven tenths of a percent. Bitcoin up 1.5%. Assets generally did well yesterday. Elon Musk is buying Twitter, $44 billion. Employees are a little bit freaked out. Um, certainly this is going to do well for Dogecoin and cryptocurrencies as Twitter will start to become a marketplace for cryptos. It's pretty interesting, right? Um, 
when you're the Winklevoss twins, the guys who kind of think Mark Zuckerberg screwed them out of Facebook, if you're Mark Cuban, if you're Binance, if you're Anderson Horowitz, you kind of love that such a publicist promoter just picked up an asset that'll uh, make it okay for you to check out with Bitcoin. The problem is you also have employees aren't thrilled. He's impulsive. Um, some people are preparing for mass departures. I wouldn't be surprised to see the San Francisco corporate offices shut down. He shut down Tesla's corporate offices and moved to Texas. So I see this a little bit differently than you do. People on Tinder are now using Tinder to get jobs, which is pretty interesting. People are using Tinder to sell insurance policy. Uh, people are using LinkedIn to find boyfriends and girlfriends. What better place to find a person with a job than someone who has a job, right? Um, that's a little messed up. Space Link, SpaceX's Sp Starlink. That's for some reason that's tough for me to get out this morning. It's going to work with Hawaiian Airlines in a partnership to put internet service on planes starting in 2023. That's nice. A hacker stole a million dollars of Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs. Um, NFTs have been pretty much so a disaster so far with people paying as much as like $50 million for NFT, trying to resell them months later and getting like $3. And <clears throat> what you're looking for in an NFT is what you're looking for in the real world of art. You're looking for someone who says, I'm going to be a digital only artist. And they become prolific and they become very good at what they do and then they die. It's a weird thing to say, but the more they can do it, the less value it has in the art world. You're not looking at just like, hey, bored ape. You're looking at something that has a cult following. You're not looking for Beeple unless Beeple has a cult following. If he's got 20 million people on Twitter following him, Instagram, that's when you're like, oh, I see what the value of a limited series from him might be. Facebook has opened its first ever physical retail location, dubbed the Metastore. It's going to be trying to drum up interest in VR headsets. It's going to open near San Francisco next month. Can I just say boring? Or is that just me being mean? Um, I don't know. Just not buying into it yet. I'll probably be the last one on the bus and go, hey, everyone, VR is awesome. And y'all look at me like, yeah, we know. Global shares are looking a little steadier today than yesterday. China is doing mass testing of COVID in um, kind of like a, a nod to we don't have this under control. And that's a little upsetting. Yesterday, I said something that was a little striking. I said, our vaccines in the United States and the West have been way more effective than China's vaccines and Russia's vaccines. We have better science. We have better data. Um, China stayed kind of locked down still to this point, and they did it hardcore again. There is something to be said for having, I'm not going to say the American healthcare system, but a Western healthcare system. Home asking prices appear to be returning back to earth. Many major area despite row, record low inventory, are starting to see bids come down. And yet we're still seeing shocking numbers. In some areas, I believe, like the Bay Area, we may not see prices come down because people aren't necessarily buying with income. They're buying a lot of times with stock. Two courtside seats for the Nuggets Warriors game, five will run you $26,000. That's money. Those are tickets that are not being bought, in my opinion. With income, they're being bought with assets that have done well and they've, they've sold them. And it feels like house money or free money or monopoly money. It doesn't feel like you've been digging a ditch or underneath someone's kitchen trying to get the plumbing to work after turkey bones are stuffed down it. Average 30 year fixed rate mortgage, 5.11% up from last year's 2.97%. That's amazing. That's a big difference. Huge difference. Home prices jumped 20% in February, but slowdown may be coming. So says Case Schiller today. 
The Sun Belt cities continue to see the highest gains, like Phoenix, Tampa, and Florida, as well as Miami. Minneapolis, New York, Washington, D.C. saw the smallest gains. Mortgage rates began rising. The Case-Shiller Index is my favorite housing index. It's experiencing a renewed sense of urgency. Buyers work through a small number of homes for sale. Right now, for the median home in America on a 30-year mortgage, the payment's about $550 higher than it was a year ago due to an increase in cost for mortgage costs. Got a good show for you. Stay with us. I'll hit market updates in just a minute. Find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. An education-first approach to managing your money. This is the Rob Black Show. U.S. birth rate fell by 4% from 2019 to 2020, the sharpest drop any single year in over 50 years. Lowest number of births since 1979. Those are future taxpayers. You know, Congress is in a war of looking to see how much they can stumble over each other and act stupid for your money. Some candidates seem to run on, let's say stupid things so we can get stupid people to give us money. That'd be like, let's say smart things to get smart people to give us money. That's how I view politics. It's all about the money. Um, And to be honest with you, if, if I can tone out or tune out the national political scene, I would. I think local is the way I want to live my life. That's where I'm. Why? That's where I'm at. Um, I'd rather have a really good principal at an elementary school brought in from a superintendent than say the greatest president of the United States, because I just think they're dysfunctional. It's a broken system. So I don't get caught up in it. I don't get worried about it. I don't get angry about it. I try not to, at least. Let's talk stock market. Let's talk what we're seeing out there today. Um, the market's taking a licking this year. There's no doubt about it. The S&P 500's hanging about as tough as it can. I would like the S&P and the NASDAQ to get a good 20% correction in for just make it ugly. Make the VIX go super high. The VIX is a volatility index, and basically it shows people giving up. As bad of a year as we're having, it's not bad enough. People aren't giving up. We used to, for years and years and years, buy the 5% dip. And now that we've got the 15% dip, like, eh, I may not buy, but I'm going to sit there and wait for it to roar back. SP 500 is in the news because it's holding a good support level, which I kind of like when you start looking at the charts. It shows that it's putting in a lot of work in over the last three months of saying this is as low as we go. But again, we haven't had that with the volatility to really shake out the freaks. The people who are worried out of their minds. EPS, Sherwin-Williams, Archer Daniels, Midland, Whirlpool, Valero Energy, all higher after posting better than expected results of earnings. Sherwin-Williams is interesting because they're obviously a play on homes. EPS is interesting because they're obviously a play on the economy, digital economy, delivering of goods. Archer Daniels Midland is a big food company. Whirlpool or big appliances. Valero Energy is gas and oil, right? Today, we get Alphabet, Microsoft, Apple, Meta, and Amazon. They're not all reporting, but they are disproportionate right now with the stock market. Big tech is not in favor after maybe a 20-year run of being in favor. With a hiccup here or there, Alphabet, Microsoft, Apple, Meta, Amazon, you've made a lot of money if you've held those names in the last 10 years, 20 years, even when there are pullbacks. But now you're starting to look at Meta and go, is this broken? The lackluster indications reflect a modicum of caution. The growth concerns that manifested themselves um, in the last couple of weeks are saying, you know, McDonald's is way sexier than Meta. And you're like, what? Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov has reportedly said the risks of nuclear war are now very, very significant and should not be underestimated. While also acknowledging that it is possible such risks are being inflated. <laughs> How's that for double speak? On the one hand, nuclear war, chances growing. On the other hand, that may be an inflated thought. Um, I want someone to cut off his hand. Just one of them so we know where he stands. Please don't cut off anyone else's hand. Um, 
so what's happening with China right now, again, good news is bad news, bad news is good news sometimes, right? So China's having a, a problem with its zero tolerance approach with respect to COVID. So they're not letting people go to work and spread it around the country. Russia stepped up its offensive in Ukraine. But the China one and the Russia one, when put together, should mean that at some point in time, the Fed's going to say, you know what, we don't have to raise it at every meeting this year. And just that idea of like uh, Jerome Powell said in a speech today, blah, 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 economy, blah, 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 inflation. Oh, and by the way, we're aware of China and Russia and what they're doing to the world economy. And we're seeing the oil prices drop. So as we want to kill inflation, our goal is to see oil prices drop. They're doing it for us. It could kind of be played that way in media. I'm not telling you they're doing that or, or going to do that. It's not a promise. Like that's the fix for our economy. That's the fix for our stock market. Our economy doesn't need fixing. Our economy is fine. I will say it, it, it is pretty interesting watching how many people are quitting. Um, and they're almost apathetic about it. So total durable good orders increased eight tenths of a percent month over month following an upwardly revised 1.7% decline from in February. The durable goods orders number was good. It's a nice rebound in order activity. Durable goods are things that are big and bulky, like refrigerators, washers, and dryers. They kind of give us a, a thought of big ticket items. When you invest $30,000 to have a new heater installed or an air conditioning and heating system, it should last a while, but it's also one of the bigger checks you're going to write this year. That's the idea on durable goods. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if I'm wrong. But that's um, I know. Delta's going to play a flight attendant during boarding as airline faces a union drive. How they've gotten away with that for such a long time is insane. Then again, if you pay the stewardesses more money, my flight to Vegas is going to be more money. I don't know which side it is. Am I being personal here or do I should be a good social uh, steward? Delta Airlines is going to start paying flight attendants during boarding the first for a major U.S. airline, an initiative that comes during a unionization drive for the Atlanta-based airline's biggest work group. Delta plans to begin the boarding pay half the flight attendants' hourly rates on June 2nd. The carrier is also increasing boarding time for narrow-body flights to 40 minutes from 35, which the company says is one of the several steps we're taking to add resiliency to their operations. You don't think about those extra five minutes as making things a little bit more smooth for all people involved. But I kind of feel like um, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. The boarding pay is on top of the 4% raises Delta has announced in March. So higher labor costs are inflationary to the employers. They're good for the economy because we're paying out more money to the individual consumer who can consume and will, as we've been seeing our whole entire lifetimes. They're bad for me who wants to fly because those costs will get pushed on. A lot of times some companies are like, I need to make 25%. I was doing math last night with my son and we're doing profit margins as well as discounts. I'm like, with profits you add, with discounts you subtract. You always do a multiplication angle somewhere in here to figure it out based on decimals, right? So 25% off is 0 0.025 or is it 0 0.25, right? It's 0 0.25. Anyhow, it's going to be passed on to me in the profit margins, the consumer. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial. A personal financial plan with custom investment advice. That's why Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, EP services were built with you in mind. How can they help you? Find out at robblackshow.com. Robblackshow.com. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com. The rise of the metaverse is kind of, how shall we say, the aggressive area of investing. The rise of Bitcoin is an aggressive area of investing. I would be very, very cautious right now 
but also opportunistic. A lot of stocks that you loved a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, some of them are down 60, 70, 80%. Some of them are down 10, 15, 20%. The ones that are down 70%, and I can, I'm looking at you right now, Roblox. Um, I love the platform. Um, creators can make their own games, items, and other content within an overarching world and earn virtual currency that can be exchanged for real money. Um, stock's down, I think, 51% from its IPO. That's more important of a, a measure than from their all-time high. All time high could show a lot of speculation. 50% from the IPO shows kind of what Wall Street and the world kind of agreed to. Let's start this company here. Roblox saw engagement and spending surge in pandemic conditions, but it's now up against difficult comparisons. They are one of the first metaverse stocks out there. Average bookings per daily active user um, have started dropping aggressively. Um, that's telling you that money's not being spent on the platform at the same rate that it was before. I'll give you some, you know, anecdotal, and you probably have some anecdotal in your head. And there's a shot for anecdotal, um, but you get it in your tukish. Um, Roblox is something I've never played with. It's something I'm, my kids are too old. But you kind of see kids going that direction. And it's a little bit of a, I don't want to say a poor man's Minecraft, but a younger kid's Minecraft. Active daily users in, in numbers of millions have steadily climbed, but are starting to steadily climb more left to right than left to up. Is this stock to buy right now? I can't answer that for you. Um, I can tell you it is a metaverse type stock. It's something I don't need, so I'm going to pass. But um, it's one of the stories that's out there for sure. Let's take a look at the market numbers today, see how we're opening up, see how we're doing. Um, not terribly well. NASDAQ's down 337, the Russell down 32, Dow down 350, the SP 500 down 66. Big tech earnings are on cue today. Um, I'm starting to see some real whoosh downs. The volatility is still not where we want it to be. You want to see the VIX, and you can go Google this. You want to see, not Google it, excuse me. Um, go type in a chart. Type in VIX. And um, what you're looking for is just incredible spikes. March 1st, 2020. That's when the pandemic started really hitting. I think some people are calling March 13th, 2020, the day the U.S. shut down, the day the music died. Um, we're certainly up in volatility from this time last year. But we're still maybe a little less than half from the spike that we saw in March of 2020, that's where we want to get to. That's when people give up. That's when you see on the cover of Business News and World Reports, stocks are dead. Buy sticks and stones. Um, you kind of want that type of headline. Do you remember a year ago, I basically lost a friendship that she had emailed me and She's all excited about getting into the world of investing in the world that I'm in. And she basically sold a house. Her name was Sarah. And she has a baby, but not a baby daddy. So she's great. Single mom is the best way of saying that. So she's got the single mom thing going on. And she had bought a house, just a determined young woman. Good for her. But when she sold the house, she didn't really have a plan for the money. So she started investing it. And this, this all came across in an email to me that I hadn't talked to her in like five plus years. I can't really say she's a great friend, but she's a friend nonetheless. And I didn't make fun of her, but I read it on air. I'm like, she's going to lose it all. I was concerned. And I was going to call her on Friday. I think I did this on Wednesday. And she, oddly enough, happened to hear it. She's lost it all. Um, 
she got in when there was no volatility. She got in when things were easy. She got in when everything was moving up. She got into things like Bitcoin and GameStop and AMC. GameStop and AMC are just average companies in a great economy. They're nothing special. And then when things get tough and you know business models start to change, they're awful companies. But for a very short period of time, we breathe life into them to kind of throw the middle finger at Wall Street. Um, that's when you can tell there's too much froth and speculation, in my opinion. We need to get that volatility up so that she looks at me and goes, you're the hero. You're a man. You could invest in good times and bad times and, oh, your muscles. Like, you almost need that kind of reverence for creating wealth versus everyone can do it. It's easy. I think everyone can do it. It's easy if you're doing it in a 401k and you give it time. I think if you're trying to become a stock picker with, uh, how shall we say, two years of kind of casually watching the stock market experience, I think you're an idiot. Uh, people like CFP, Chad Burton, and myself, um, I have a large chunk of my money managed by professional money managers at EP Wealth. Chad has a large chunk of his money managed by uh, wealth managers at EP Wealth, who they're not doing radio shows, who they're, they're, they're spreadsheet people. They have their own formulas for picking stocks, and sometimes that's a good thing because they're dedicated to doing it. Uh, I can tell you as having two teenage kids or roughly teenage kids, my time to focus on stock innovation and find the, the next breaking hot stock. I'm just not that interested. I still want to do the economy. I still want to do the stock market. I still want to get you to retirement. Um, I'd rather take a look like, oh, tough economy coming up. We're seeing people spend less on pets. We want Fido to be happy. And when a year ago, when there was no volatility and everything was moving up, People were buying houses, people were buying Teslas, people were buying dogs. They're getting pure breeds. They're getting like dog collars with GBS trackers in them. And now we're starting to see some things dry up. Now, it still hasn't started to dry up in real estate, but they're next. Now, interesting because real estate is local, local, local. I don't think it'll be as bad as the broad swath of markdowns that we've seen short term on some names, long term on others. Um, but that email a year ago is a flashing sign to you. When Sarah didn't know what she was doing, she really got it over her head. Um, and it was easy to do it. It's like betting on a horse race. When, when you see the odds, a one to nine, a one ninth, <laughs> you're not getting a good return. You're going to bet a dollar. You're going to get 10 cents if your horse comes in first. Now, if he's racing against 30 to 1, 30 to 1, 60 to 1, 60 to 1, 90 to 1, 99 to 1, there's a good chance he wins and you're going to go for more than a dollar. But you know what? It's a horse race. And horses do funny things. So don't get in over your skis. That's an easy horse race to win and you get really confident. Then the next race, when it gets more competitive, you're like, I'm good at this. I won the last one, clearly. And you forgot, like, you picked a winner in a race where some horses had, like, broken legs and missing ears and haven't eaten in three weeks. Like it wasn't exactly a fair fight. Wall Street kind of creates that same kind of scenario at time where it's not exactly a fair fight. Low cost of money made it very easy for everyone to make money. Irreverent, over the top and smart as a whip. This is the Rob Black Show.